Mars, the red planet. It seems so Earth-like. Rolling plains, mountain ranges, and giant canyons. Reaching summertime temperatures in the high 60s. Days only slightly longer than here on Earth, and seasons reminiscent of our own. Mankind has long speculated there must be life on our sister planet Mars. Will scientists find any? Welcome to Space School. Today's topic, Mars, has captured the imagination of humans throughout the ages. Its striking red color inspired Babylonian astronomers to name the planet Nurgle, the god of fire and destruction. The ancient Greeks called the planet Ares for their god of war. And when the Romans conquered the Greeks, they renamed the gods, and Ares became Mars. In the late 19th century, telescopes improved, and astronomers were able to map the planet. Unfortunately, a glitch in the optics created an illusion that long straight canals had been dug on the surface, fueling speculation that Mars was inhabited by a race of highly intelligent and industrious aliens. Stories of Martians invading Earth were eventually replaced by a more mundane tale of a cold, barren world clearly unable to support intelligent life. Mars, one of the four rocky inner planets, is roughly half the size of Earth. Its core is estimated to be 900 to 1200 miles across, most likely composed of iron, nickel, and sulfur. The planet does not have a strong magnetic field, a significant indication that its core is solid. Just like Earth, Mars is tilted on its axis. A day there is 24 hours and 39 minutes long. This tilt creates seasons, but oddly, due to the eccentricity of Mars's orbit, they're not all the same length as here on Earth. In the northern hemisphere, spring lasts almost two months longer than autumn. Mars's orbit around the sun takes almost two Earth years. A Martian year lasts 687 days. The geography of Mars might make an Earthling feel right at home. The planet has valleys, plains, volcanoes, even polar ice caps. The surface is covered mostly by volcanic rock, much of it iron rich. This rock is sprinkled with iron oxide, rust, and that's what gives Mars its famous red tint. That rust also tells us something else, something very important. For the iron in Mars rocks to rust, the planet must have once been much warmer and wetter than it is today. Evidence that points to a planet once teeming with life. Mars is also home to a couple of record-breaking geologic formations, the highest mountain and the largest canyon found anywhere in the solar system. Olympus Mons is a volcano 16.7 miles high, three times the elevation of Mount Everest. As there's no movement of tectonic plates under the Martian surface, this volcano has been spewing lava at the same location for hundreds of millions of years. Global imaging has shown that Olympus Mons is over 340 miles wide and still growing. The Valles Marineris is the largest known canyon in the solar system, stretching for almost 2,500 miles in length and 125 miles in width. More amazing, its fissures go almost five miles down almost five times as deep as the Grand Canyon. The Canyon Valley's Marineris would stretch from New York City to Los Angeles, 10 times the length of the Grand Canyon. It is thought that Mars once had an atmosphere much like Earth's, but today the density of the Martian atmosphere is just 1% of ours, and virtually all of that is carbon dioxide. The red planet, with almost no oxygen to breathe, is no place for humans to live. The lack of an atmosphere also means there is little greenhouse effect to trap heat. So while in summer temperatures may reach a comfortable 60 degrees Fahrenheit, in winter they can plummet to an unimaginable minus 220 degrees Fahrenheit. But despite this thin sky, there are still clouds and powerful winds. Some of the worst dust storms in the solar system rage across Mars. Called dust devils, they resemble tornadoes, only 50 times as wide and 10 times as high as similar storms on Earth. Mars has other windstorms so fierce, they've been known to cover the entire planet. Mars differs from Earth in other ways as well. Even the view in the night sky would seem strange. Mars has not just one, but two moons. They are named Phobos and Deimos for the sons of the god Ares, who followed their father into battle. But unlike our moon, these celestial bodies are small, irregularly shaped, and orbit close to the planet. Due to their odd shapes, both are thought to be captured asteroids. Phobos orbits Mars three times a day the only moon known to go around a planet faster than it rotates. 
One of the most important similarities between Earth and Mars is water. Polar ice caps there contain so much water that if they melted, they would cover the entire planet with an ocean 30 feet deep. Still, though, this is far less than oceans on Earth, which average over 12,000 feet deep. But so far, all of the water scientists have found is in the form of either ice or gas, not liquid. And liquid water is the key to life. Researchers have found plenty of evidence that liquid water once flowed on the surface. One of the best indicators they've come across is hematite, a mineral that forms only in the presence of water. Other evidence pointing to the possible existence of life on Mars can be found in the air. Methane, formaldehyde, and ammonia have been detected. These compounds are often byproducts of biological life, and they would dissipate quickly in the thin Martian atmosphere unless they were being constantly replenished. But before you prepare for an invasion of little green men, be aware that life on Mars almost certainly will be nothing more complex than microorganisms. Mars has been visited more often by spacecrafts from Earth than anywhere else. In fact, second only to Earth, no other planet has as many satellites orbiting it. Starting with Viking in the 1970s, through the groundbreaking Pathfinder missions, which sent robotic cars to the surface in the late 1990s, Mars has been a target for human exploration. In May of 2008, NASA landed the Phoenix probe near the North Pole. With its robotic arm and mobile laboratory, its goal is to search for a habitable environment and possibly life on Mars. And what about sending astronauts to Mars? Both NASA and the European Space Agency plan to put humans on the red planet within 30 years. But this is no easy task. The journey alone would take at least 200 days, and then they still have to make it back. So it looks as if for now, human exploration of our sister planet will depend on robots. This is Space School signing off. Class dismissed.